What's up? My name is Jen and I am a product photographer turned e-commerce seller. And now I sell products on Amazon FBA. They are private label products. They are branded and I have had a significant amount of success that I wasn't honestly expecting. And I want to share all the tips and tricks with you on how I did that. So in this video, I am actually going to photograph the Mighty Leaf Tea uh, as my example product, but I want to show you how to do the product on white photo because I think it's the most important. And if you can get a higher click through rate, whether that be triple or quadruple the average, you are going to just naturally see more sales. You don't even have to increase your conversion rates. As long as you can increase your click through rate, you are going to get more sales. So the only way to do that is to make your hero image basically look better than everybody else's. I'm excited to get into it and show you exactly how I shot my products. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I do any sort of photography is I'm actually going to take a minute to look up the competition on this product. I'm on Amazon and I'm going to look for a matcha powder. And what I'm doing is just basically looking through all of the other products to see what the pictures look like for those products. So I can maybe find a unique way to make my product look slightly different or stand out. And as you can see, there's a lot of different things on here. We've got things in a round container, things in a little bag. There's a lot of different containers here. And one of the most important things when you're photographing a product like this is you want to make it take up as much of the screen as possible. As you can see, as I'm scrolling through my phone right now, all of these pictures are really small. Like they're literally this big when I'm looking at them. So you want to fill up as much of the screen as possible for the most part. They're all just sort of eye level. So we'll play a around a little bit with angles and just making the product look a little bit more interesting. So it's not just this flat, flat image. When you're getting ready to photograph a product, number one, you want to make sure that your product is as perfect as possible. So you might have to get a couple samples sent from your supplier, but just make sure that there's no, you know, ripples on the um, labeling itself and there's no marks. The next thing I'm going to say is I do not have the room light in this room on. I have just completely opened up my window so I can let as much natural light in as possible. And normally I would use artificial lights, um, like pro professional video lights, but because I want to make this as accessible as possible for as many people as possible, I'm going to use complete natural light and I'm going to use my iPhone just so you can see what you can actually do with not a whole lot of expensive tools. The next thing that I've got here is this, it's just a backdrop paper that I basically uh, put onto the wall here just to create like a seamless backdrop. So you can basically just get a piece of paper like this from the store and create a seamless backdrop like this. Got some painter's tape there. And um, I've also got this on a adjustable um, table here. That way if I need to move it up or down, I can, which is, is helpful for me when I'm trying to photograph products at eye level. I like being able to make the table as high as possible. So we've got this uh, matcha here and I'm thinking of the different ways that I can photograph it. The, um, the label actually has the matcha go all the way around, which is interesting, but the brand is right here. And then it's also got this really cool ribbon on top here. So I might want to be able to show that. And because all of the products that were photographed were basically photographed straight on like this, they looked very, very flat. I might do an angle or something like this just to add some interest. And I do have a tripod here. I think being able to just stabilize everything really, really helps. So I have the moment app on my phone and I find that this is the easiest app to work with. If you want to take photos, you don't have to pay anything for it, but at least you can dial in the settings of your pictures and it works a little bit better than using the regular camera app on your phone. And then the first thing I'm going to do is just clean all of my little, uh, lenses here. It's a really critical step. A lot of people miss it. So now we're just going to play around a little bit with the angle on iPhones. There's three different zoom levels. So there is a wide angle, a normal angle, and then a two times angle, like a telephoto angle. I like to use the two X angle. I find that it doesn't distort the product so much. If you have a super wide angle, you know how the edges start to look a little bit, uh, they start to bend. I don't really like that look. And so I'm just going to use the two X on here. That's the 0.5. We definitely don't want that. So we'll start with the two X. And, um, since I want to kind of show a little bit of the top of the, the container here, I might move up a little bit and then angle it down. And I'm not going to worry about this painter's tape here or anything like that, because we're going to end up removing the background anyways. 
And I'm just gonna move the, the product as close as I can to the light. I've got the window here, and so I wanna be able to get as much of that window light on it as possible. So I, I really like that angle. I might just angle a little bit more this way. I like that now we've kind of got like a 3D look, whereas all of the other products were more kind of 2D. And the other thing that I've got here is um, just a poster board. And being able to put this on the side is really gonna fill in some light there. So as you can tell, that is before I add it, and then that is after. It's just gonna help bounce back a little bit of light there. And then I also wanna turn on the timer here just so that when I uh, take this picture, by pressing it, I don't end up creating uh, any shake or anything like that. And then uh, with, these, uh, with this app, you can actually control your shutter speed here. You can control your ISO. Um, I like to try to keep the ISO as low as possible because it actually introduces a little bit of grain into the picture and when we're doing something like iPhone photography, we want this image to look as crisp as possible. The other thing that I've got toggled on here is RAW. So when you take pictures on your iPhone, you want to take them in RAW because you want to get as much data as possible. If we start with like a JPEG, it's going to compress that image a lot and we're going to lose a lot of detail from the start. So you want to start with a lot of information and then we can export it as a JPEG later after we've got it dialed in. And then also by clicking on the picture, it's going to help focus on the picture and, you know, brighten the image to expose for that, for that product. Okay, let's take a picture and see how it looks. So as you can see, it takes a second actually to load because it's such a high detail image. So I can really zoom into this image and see all of that detail. And that's what I'm going for. I wanna make sure that I have as much information in this image as possible. My next favorite angle is to go down super low just to make the, the product look as big as possible. So we're gonna do that. I got the camera literally right next to the base of this table. And by doing that, I've been able to make the product look really big, bold, and authoritative, and I just, I love how that looks. So, I can even move it up a little bit closer. Okay, I think that looks phenomenal. So let's just focus on that. And now let's bring in this, this light here and take the picture. So I've got two different angles. I really like the two different angles. Now we just need to go in and remove the background of those. All right, now that we have our images, we are actually gonna pull them into Lightroom. And Lightroom is essentially an app where you can do tweaks to your images. And I think it's really important to use an app like this because you can't do these same tweaks just in your regular you know, phone editing app. And uh, don't worry if you don't have Lightroom on desktop, you can actually use it for free on your phone. And so all of these things that I'm gonna show you right now, you can also do on your phone. All you have to do is download the app and just create a login and you can follow along that way. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how I have edited these images in Lightroom and um, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna reset this image. You can see when I first brought it into here, it was a very, very flat image. All that I've done here, I left the white balance the same. I decreased the exposure a bit just to kind of bring back down some of that contrast. Increased the highlights. I wanted to make sure the whites, uh, the white uh, background of this product on the label was nice and bright. Uh, brought the shadows down a bit, brought the whites up again as well. And then the reason that I've had to bring the blacks down so far is as you can see, um, the Mighty Leaf logo here, if you don't have this down nice and low, you're not gonna see the, the detail in that. And that, that was, I wanted to protect that. And then I also increased clarity. If you increase clarity too much, it starts to get weird. So just did a little bit with that. Uh, vibrance, this is another area that I think is really important. Um, the images, when they're really flat, they, they don't have a lot of vibrance. So a lot of that, you know, if we go too low, the color's gone. So we wanna bring some of that vibrance up, bring out some of that green, especially when, you know, this product is gonna be sitting next to a bunch of other products that have green in them. You want yours to really pop. Same thing with the saturation. I wouldn't go too crazy with this. See, it starts to look like, you know, vomit green. We don't wanna do that. So we wanna keep it really natural, but also nice and bright and colorful. And then I also just played a little bit with the green here. So in the HSL slash color section here, you can um, 
actually completely change the color of the green. So if you go, you know, this way, the green turns more to like an orangey green. And if you go this way, it turns more to like a blue green. I'm going to leave that alone because I think that it looks like it looks in real life when I look at it on here. But I did increase the saturation a bit because I did want that color, especially the green, really to pop. And that's pretty much all that I did. Um, the sharpening here is increased a little bit too. You really want this image to be nice and sharp. You know, make sure that the font on here is clear. You can read everything, no problem. Because what's gonna happen is when you upload this to Amazon, people are gonna zoom in. They're gonna zoom in like this. So you wanna make sure you can actually read everything. It's legible, it doesn't look grainy or anything like that. And then I basically did the same thing with the second image here. There's some slight differences in the adjustments, but same idea. I wanted to make sure that the whites are nice and bright. The shadows, you know, aren't too, too dark here. They, they pop as well but enough contrast and wanted to make sure that the, the label looks really nice. So with this one, you can see there's a little bit of some white dots in there. So we can kind of help with that by bringing down the uh, shadows and bringing down the blacks really helps kind of clear that out. Then I basically took those images and brought them into Canva. And so Canva is a free application, but in order to do the background remover, you do have to be on the paid version. It's extremely affordable and I think it's totally worth it if you're an Amazon seller, whether it's creating graphics for um, my products, the A plus content, um, you know, digital downloads for customers, anything like that, you're gonna wanna be able to do that pretty qu quickly and easily. And this is honestly the, the easiest place to do it. It's the most user friendly and it's very, very affordable. So what I did is I had removed the uh, background here. So if you, if I clicked on the photo and then basically hit the background remover, it's um, gonna remove that whole background. And then you can make any adjustments too. So if there was still like a little bit of tape left over here, you can delete that as well. I'm just gonna reset it so you can see what it looked like before. So this was basically the um, image beforehand. And then I hit the uh, background remover. And then the next thing that I did was basically zoom in as far as you can. And I've got this on a square here because that's how it's gonna be when you upload it. But I, I zoomed in as far as I possibly could. And uh, you know the reason I'm doing that is I want this product to take up absolutely as much space as possible in a square. Um, I did the same thing with this one. So basically just removed that background and I'm sure we could even maybe make this a little bit bigger here just to kind of fill up slightly more of the screen. And I like the, the, the way that I photographed this one is actually very, very square. As you can see, the product is almost hitting like all four corners. Whereas this one isn't because of the way that I, I photographed it. It's more like a diamond shape almost. This one's definitely bigger and more authoritative. But the next thing I wanted to do was put it into a picture. I took a screenshot of the, the products that are on Amazon right now. And then I put my product photos in there. So I can actually look and see, okay, how does it? Uh, how does this image look in the lineup of the other products? Does it look like it pops out enough? Does it look unique enough? Is it? Um, is the angle look good? You know, which which photo should I go with? You can clearly see that those two angles definitely look different than anything else on here. I think I would personally go with this one because it is taking up more of the screen. It looks bigger. It looks more authoritative. I like doing that angle when you are slightly, your eye is slightly lower than the product. It just makes it look bigger. It makes it look taller. But what you can do if you do have brand registry, you can do an AB test. So um, ideally what I would do is test out both of these images. So I would upload both image and AB test and let Amazon see which one gets the most clicks. So if you know this one gets the most clicks, then clearly that's the winner. Let's move forward with that one. And if this one does, then that's okay too. That's the winner. Let's move forward with that. So I would encourage you to check that out. All right, guys, that is it. That is how I approach product photography for my Amazon listings. And this is the same method that I use for my products. Really just taking a critical approach to your you know, product images and whether you're the one taking them or you're hiring someone else to take them, you wanna make sure that they do look different, they stand out. And the easiest way you can do that is with angles. And so that's kind of my uh, trick to making my product stand out. If you do have any questions, be sure to let me know. If you like this video, give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more content like this. I will be posting more content on photo, video, marketing tips,